No wonder you've been gone all day. You must have bought half of Fifth Avenue. Madison Avenue, too. Uh, I'll take the difference. Excuse me. Uh, Page Man, will you? Uh, yeah. Raven, what do you think you're doing? We're supposed to be traveling light. Don't worry. This will all fit into just a couple of luggage. A couple of baggage? Huh, this is going to take about 30 or 40 suitcases to get all this stuff here. Honey, we're going to be fugitives. We can't very well go carrying a truckload of luggage we're behind us. We're not fugitives yet. I mean, I haven't seen anyone looking for us. There aren't wanted posters all over the place. Yeah, we'll just wait until Cameron gets a hold of it. If he finds out that we're gone, they're going to be printed up just real quick. Oh, boy, I better send him a picture. I don't want him to use just any old thing. Something tells me that you're not taking this very seriously. I am taking this seriously. Shopping is a very serious business. Sweetheart, what do I have to do to convince you we are going to be fugitives? We're going to be running from the law. We're not going to be able to trust anyone. We're not going to be able to stay in one place. And we're not going to have any money until Spencer gets here with the cash. And meanwhile, you went out and spent a fortune. I did not. Well, what do you call all this? I charged it. We'll have to pay Geraldine back later. <laughs> oh, Raven, you're a pip. Well, you know, I just, I don't want to let things bother me. I, I can't live my life that way. I wish I knew your secret. Well, come over here and I'll whisper it to you. Okay. Mm. 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 That More? must be the rest of the oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, right over there is good. Hello, Raven. Geraldine, I didn't need to use the house phone to find you. I just followed the man with the most packages. to keep me in the dark. We worked for months to set up this plan, our only plan to locate that missing phone book. Now you've allowed it to crash and burn. We didn't allow it to happen, David. What made you think that we could control the actions of Raven Alexander and Sky with We didn't know what was happening until it was too late. Well, apparently, Ian Devereaux didn't have much trouble finding out what was happening. Well, I'd say he's a bit closer to Raven than we are, being her fiancé. Ex-fiancé. Are you sure of that? Geraldine Saxon got it straight from Ian. Haven't you contacted her? No, we haven't. Well, that's rather strange. Your people are always so thorough. I should think that she would have been the first person you'd want to talk to. I have my reasons for not wanting to speak to the lady. What reasons? I don't want to go into it, Mike. But I do intend to make good on my promise to Mr. Whitney that if he failed to cooperate, he would face the consequences. Meaning you're going to arrest him as an espionage agent? Although those sensitive documents were found in his bedroom wall safe. I think that's enough evidence to send him away for the next 20 years. But you've also stated your belief that he was framed. Whitney was framed by his friend, Ian. That was an expression of a personal opinion, Mike. If the court feels that way, Whitney has no problem. If they don't... Mr. Cameron, my goodness, that sounds rather vindictive. Nancy, what we're talking about here is a defeat. A defeat not just for my plan, but for this entire country. It's intelligence service and several hundred very courageous and hard-working people all over the world who've been helping us. Now, they're the ones who are going to suffer here. Obviously, we're not happy about that. We've done a great deal. I hope you know that. Of course I do. You have, you have both gone well beyond the call of duty. And so have you, David, especially in arranging Nancy's South American trip. Yes, I know that, too. I... I haven't always been fair, all right, and at times perhaps I've been dishonest, but the truth is I would do much more than I have already done to get that phone book back. And I have to go. If you hear anything further, you know how to reach me. Good night. Good night. Good night. Strange, isn't it? He didn't even bother to contact Geraldine. Yes, because... She was the one who knew what was happening in New York. I mean, she talked to Ian. Why didn't he question her? Well, he must have had a reason. Cameron has a reason for everything he does. 
Geraldine, you do not understand the situation. It's not what you think. My dear girl, I did not come all this way to listen to your lame excuses. All I can say is, I have seen your fiancé, your former fiancé, and I find it appalling that you should hurt him so needlessly. Uh, now, Geraldine, As for you, I was led to believe, Skylar, that Ian Devereaux was your friend. Now, if this is your idea of loyal behavior... I told you how I felt about Ian. Then you should have told Ian how you felt. The truth would have been kinder than this. <coughs> Geraldine, uh, it's not the way it seems. This was no deliberate rendezvous. It's just something that happened. Oh, I see. <laughs> just one of those extraordinary coincidences. You both happen to be in the same hotel, in the same city, at the same time. And in the interests of economy, you decided to share a room. This is ridiculous. You don't understand. You can't understand because we can't tell you anything. Tell me what? Uh, you have spoken with Ian. Uh, he has canceled the wedding, I would imagine. Yes. yes. He asked me to cancel all of the arrangements, and I've done exactly that. A wedding without a bridegroom would seem strangely incomplete. I'll get it. More. <sighs> uh, I'll take this. I did a little shopping. Good Lord. What are you doing with all that new luggage? You have a whole closet full of luggage at home. I like luggage. You're planning something, aren't you? You're planning a trip, a long one. Uh, yes, Geraldine, as a matter of fact, uh, we were. We couldn't stand the idea of going home and facing everyone after what's happened. And why not? Why did you find it so necessary to run away like criminals? Uh, Geraldine, we're not why running away. Why are you so, so secretive? Why didn't you just tell Ian the truth? Because we couldn't. Raven, you were not obligated to marry him. Why were you so cruel? You've made me ashamed of, of every good thought I've ever had about you. But it's not my fault. It wasn't my idea. They forced me into accepting his engagement. Raven. I did not want to marry Ian. I wanted to marry Skye. But if I do that, then he's going to go to prison. He'll do what? Raven, for God's sake, keep your mouth shut. They think he's an espionage agent. Oh, Raven, this is sheer hysteria. You're just saying anything that comes into your head. No, I'm not. It's the truth. But he is not guilty. He was framed. And if we don't run away, then they're going to call him a traitor and they're going to send him to prison for the rest of his life and I'll die. I'll just die. Skylar, can't you do something about these hallucinations? They're not hallucinations, Geraldine. I wish they were. The real espionage agent is the man Raven was supposed to marry. My dear friend, Ian. Here's your drink, sir. Oh, thank you. my old friend. I'm glad to see you back on St. Eleonora. Let's just hope that I'm as glad to see you, sir. Now, what's the story? Is Constantine really here? Or are you lying to me as usual? <laughs> I thought you didn't believe me. But you're wrong. His plane lands in the next two hours, and very shortly, you'll meet the man who actually knows where the phone book is. Remember, Snow, I never said that Constantine would provide the final answer. But he's the man who purchased the phone book from Jefferson Brown in the first place, isn't he? Yes but with my money. And yet, it never reached you. Correct. Constantine's very good reputation took quite a dive, in my estimation, when the money and the phone book vanished suddenly. Not to mention Constantine, but as you say, he didn't vanish for good. Now, I found them for you, Ian. You should be very grateful. I believe that when I see him in person. That you told me you had never actually met him in person no but i know his reputation and so do you he's a man of his word and privacy he insisted that he remain unidentified ian you should understand that of course 
You mean he's going to wear a bag over his head? <laughs> he insists that you meet in a darkened room. If he insists. <laughs> as long as he answers my questions honestly, I don't care how dark the room is. You think he sold the phone book? That he may have double-crossed you? Because people can change, you know. I doubt if he had. Why so trusting him? If he had cheated me, he would never have agreed to this meeting, now would he? No, I don't suppose he would. That is, assuming he has agreed. Oh, he'll be here, don't worry. <laughs> I trust he'll be the genuine articles now. I hope it hasn't crossed your mind to try and fool me with an imposter. Things could work out very unpleasantly for you. Now, why would I do such a thing? For a finder's fee. I hope that you could con some money out of me by producing a phony Constantine. No way, my friend. I know how to verify his identity. I'm not worried at all. I'm much more worried about you, old friend. And why is that? Oh, didn't you tell me that you were coming to St. Eleonora on your honeymoon? And then when you arrived, you came without your bride. The wedding was postponed. For how long? I don't know. Poor friend! <laughs> You've had an unlucky love affair, is that the case? <laughs> None of your business, now. But that's terrible. She was such a lovely girl. What was her name again? Uh, Raven. I said forget it, Snow. But it's impossible to understand. Ian Devereaux, the man who always broke women's hearts, and now one of them has turned the tables on you. <laughs> We'll see who has the last laugh, Devereaux. Turns out Nicole's confession had to be made all over again. Now, it was pretty much the same thing, but she admitted a little bit more than she was willing to admit before. Yeah? You think uh, you got the whole story this time? I don't know, Calvin. She's lied to me before on this case. It's really strange, Chief. There are some people you just don't expect to tell lies, at least not important ones. And Nicole Cavan has always been that kind of person in my book. In my book, too. Well, hi. Have a nice dinner. Kush, now every lie she told was just for one reason only. Self-preservation, no doubt. No, it was pr to protect Miles. Yeah, well, anyway, I'd uh, really appreciate getting to read the new statement, Chief. That's no problem. You've got access to that file, but that's not what you came here to talk to me about, what was it? Well, it was one of the things. One of the things, and Damien Tyler was the other. Yeah. Well, it just hit me real suddenly like that. He just take that job with CEA. Well, I tried to talk him out of it. It wasn't my idea, but he is obsessed with the idea of clearing his father's name. Don't I know it? He thinks the CEA is getting very close to figuring out just what happened. And he wants to be there for the kill. Do you think there's any chance he might uh, actually come back if they solve the case? I don't know, Calvin. <sighs> well, anyway, it still leaves me stuck with having to break in a new partner. The question is, who is it going to be? Well, uh, I heard Anderson saying something about Marvin Youngblood. Youngblood? you got to be kidding. I'm not kidding. Well, somebody's got to be kidding. That guy can't walk and chew gum at the same time. Oh, come on. He is the third highest decorated officer in this department. Chief, the man is impossible. We're going to get along like oil and water. Oh, you'd feel that way about anybody in this situation. You two will work it out. Derek, I am begging you to please reconsider. Calvin, he thinks the world of you. He looks up to you. Come on. You should have seen him. He was all smiles when he heard the news. Yeah, I'll just bet. In no time at all, you will have him doing things your way. I never want to see the inside of another police station again. I don't blame you. I must have looked like such a fool, revising my story for the third time. What I don't understand is why you couldn't have told it straight in the first place. 
I just couldn't, Miles. Not after all the trouble you'd had with your medical license. You thought it would be worse for me to be found dead drunk in a TV studio than in the gutter? Well, I guess I just didn't think very hard about the difference. You must have thought about it. You went to enough trouble to alter the facts. Well, yes, it was very hard. They say it's hard to be a good liar. Well, I found out they're right. Promise me one thing. No more lies, all right? Only the truth from now on? Yes. The truth. Hey, let's not talk about it anymore. We promised we wouldn't. What do you think about this restaurant? Well, it's very pretty. It's more elegant than Sid's Tavern, isn't it? Yeah, I thought we should come here before... I, I mean, since Jody has talked so much about it. We made a mistake about one thing. We thought Jody would be here tonight. I know it. I'm surprised. I thought she came here every night, just like she used to at Sid's. Maybe she went back to the television studio finally. No. I called Glenn earlier, and she wasn't there. She hadn't been there all afternoon, all night. In fact, he said that um, they've been doing reruns at the Penny Playhouse. Could it be... Uh possibility is mind-boggling that she actually chose to stay home one night. <laughs> and that, sh should I call? Find out? Yeah, I think you should. All right, be right there. Hello. Hello, Nicole. Hi, Calvin. Would you mind if I talk to you for a minute? <clears throat> no, please, sit down. Miles and I were in your territory this afternoon. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I was just having a beer with, uh, with the chief when you came in. Mm -hmm. He told me all about it. I guess you heard there was a slight alteration in the text yeah i've uh, been informed i'm glad you decided to uh tell the whole story well you know it really didn't change anything in fact if miles hadn't insisted on it i doubt i would have changed the story well still i uh i think it's best that you did calvin can i ask you a question sure go right ahead it's about jody we came here to the rock garden expecting to see her we assumed <sighs> she'd be here well, actually, I, uh, I haven't seen Jody around here all week. You haven't? No, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm sure. I've been here every night this week. You know, Dee Dee likes to come in and check on the girls, so I, I don't remember seeing Jody at all. But, no, that's not possible. I uh, talked to Mrs. Goodman. Jody's not there. Hi, Calvin. Hi, Miles. Hi, Calvin said that he hasn't seen Jody here all week. No, no, no. She said she's been here. You must have missed her. Well, it's possible, but I don't think so. I'll, uh, see you later. So long. Are you sure she wasn't at home? Mrs. Goodman said she just got back from a birthday party with Adam, and Jody had already left. She did say something peculiar. What? Well, it was something that Oscar told her, as a matter of fact. Something about Jody having left with the TV repairman. Uh, where Mrs. Saxon is at the moment? I was told that she made a plane reservation. I see. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Geraldine is in New York. Uh -huh. Well, I'm not surprised. I wonder how she figured where they were. I assume she got the information from Ian. I just had a thought. What? We were wondering why Cameron didn't get in touch with her. This could explain it, of course, because she had gone to New York. Yeah, but he would have known that, wouldn't he, if he'd checked the way we did? Well, he should have known about it, certainly. Maybe he wanted her to go there? Of course. So that the CEA could follow her. This is the most incredible story I've ever heard. Ian is such a nice man. How could he be a spy? Who knows, Geraldine? Perhaps nice guys make the best spies. I mean, would you tell your secrets to someone you didn't like? Well, he wasn't so nice when he tried to frame you for treason, though, was he? He did, though. He came to visit me when I was ill at my bedside. Shortly thereafter, Cameron found the incriminating evidence in my wall safe. And that's when they tried to strike a bargain with me. They practically blackmailed me. And the whole deal was contingent upon Raven getting close to Ian when that fell through and the CAA plan was dead. So practically am I. But running away is not the answer. Well, staying here is not the answer either. You know what they're going to do next. They're going to put his picture in the newspaper and on television. I can just see it now. Playboy millionaire accused of treason. It's the only hope there is, Geraldine. We, we can't stay here. You think you'll have hope? 
when you're on the run? No. You'll have only fear. And money. Now, listen to me, my dears. I know what you expect of me. You expect me to lecture you about facing music and running away from your responsibilities. Well, you're quite right, I am. But I am only trying to show you the realities. We are facing the realities, Geraldine. There is nothing else that we can do. I'll get it. Miss Raven Alexander? Yeah? Walter Corey, Federal Marshal. Sky? Are you Sky Whitney? Skylar Whitney? I'm sorry, you're both under arrest. for high-quality television classics ends right here on USA. Stay tuned for the longest-running daytime drama on television. Search for tomorrow next.